Hi, good afternoon and welcome. My name is Sandra. My channel is called Sussex Sandra and welcome. So this afternoon I'm going to go through the last month of using the skincare range from The Ordinary using some of the products that they recommend to use if you've got oily skin, skin with blemishes and skin with hyperpigmentation. So I've got all three going on. So what I did, I I got as many of the products that I could. Some of the products that they did recommend for me to use, I could not get. They were just not available for sale anywhere on any site at all. I can't remember the name of the products. There was one that was called magnesium phosphate something. That's one of the products I think they recommended if you've got oily skin. Couldn't get that anywhere. It just wasn't sold. Even on the ordinary website, it was just sold out just not available anywhere at all. Um, there was another product, lactic acid, that was recommended for one of the skin conditions, but was made quite clear that you shouldn't use it with the other two skin conditions. So I decided not to get that. And I think that was it. I think those are the two main things that I, I couldn't get hold of or I decided not to get in the end. Right, so let me just go through the products that I did end up using. So it did take me probably about a week, I would say near enough a week to sort of settle into a routine, trying out this product, that product, mixing and matching, doing research on YouTube, seeing what people have, what people have used who've got very similar skin conditions to me on YouTube and seeing what they did, what they found and so forth. Um, it's interesting, there, there wasn't many people on YouTube who had, who had got hyperpigmentation oily skin and blemishes all three combination and did a full review sort of for you no know, a month six weeks or whatever um some people just used it for probably like a week maybe two weeks and sort of talked about how they found the products so i've given it a good 32 days at least i really wanted to do six weeks but i've got so much skincare products <laughs> building up that I want to try out I thought okay a month 32 days is enough so let's go through the products that I did use and uh, yeah we'll, we'll um, you can tell me what you think so I've got nothing on my face now my face is completely bare all I've literally done to my face today is my normal skincare routine so this is what I do so as soon as I wake up in the morning um, I use the squalene cleanser so that's this product here so I'll put the price of the products um, on the screen. So this is it. This is a weird product. So it's it's a cream. It comes out as a cream. And how you're supposed to use it, you're supposed to rub it into your hands and melt it. And it becomes almost like an oily substance. And then you use it on your face. You rub it into your face. So you massage it into your skin to, it's supposed to lift up your makeup. Almost like an oil cleanser. That's how I understand that it should be used. So you do that. You rub it all through. And then you, you rinse it off and wash it off. So that's what I've been doing. I must admit, I... When I've used this, my skin, yes my, yes, my skin doesn't feel dry afterwards, but it doesn't feel clean either. Um, it's, it's, it just never feels enough for me. I don't know how to describe it. It just doesn't feel enough. So what I've started to do, I mean, I, I think I did, did the routine properly for a good week and a half, maybe even two weeks. Then afterwards, I just felt that my skin just didn't feel clean enough. It wasn't thorough enough for me. So I started so I started off with this and then I went in occasionally with the product I got from the Good Molecules range. So maybe twice a week I'd go in with the Good Molecules Pineapple Exfoliating Powder. So I'd use that a couple of times. Or I would go in with the Good Molecules soap bar. So I've still got some of that left. So there was a clarifying soap bar as well. But I, I just for me to me for me to feel like my face was cleansed, I didn't find that this squalene cleanser was enough. So I mean this tube is it's literally nearly finished actually. I think I can throw this one away, put it in my trash. I have got another one here unused. Not sure if I'm actually going to continue to use it or not. I'm really not sure. I feel like I should, um, but I may not. I might put it in a giveaway. So I have got a box there, still there. I might just put it in one of my giveaways instead. It's just a product. For me, it wasn't satisfying enough. I didn't feel like it did enough. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, so that was that. So after I've done that, 
I'm so used to using a toner straight afterwards. So at, get, at the beginning, um, when I started this, I was using the glycolic acid toning solution. So I was using this. I mean, you can see I haven't really used that much. Um, and there's a reason why for that. So I started using that in the mornings. And then again, continued doing a little bit of research during um, my first week of using that. It seems like the consensus was not to use acids in the morning use your acidic products in the evening um, in your nighttime routine the only acid product that seemed to be acceptable to use in the morning was a hyaluronic acid but it seems like the majority of people were saying no don't use any acids in the morning just leave this for nighttime routine only so I stopped using that in the morning and I went on and used, after I've done my cleanse, I would use the, oh I can't remember the brand, it was a balancing toner I received in um, the black. Um, I have got a spray mist product which is, can be used as a toner and as a refreshing spray and I use that in the mornings afterwards. So I did that or, and I didn't bring it down with me, um, a spray toner spray mist toner which i got from i'm pretty certain it was a boxy charm possibly last year and it was from skin and co and it was truffle therapy and i'd use that so i'd spray that on my face straight after doing my cleanse so that would give um some moisture on my skin and i would go in with my hyaluronic acid so i'd put that on Whilst I'm giving you this description, there should be a clip going probably at the top of the screen, either side of me, probably over here, um, showing what my skincare routine has been. So I'd go in with the Skin & Co mist, then I'd go in with a hyaluronic acid, and then straight after that, um, once that's kind of dried and absorbed in, I'd go in with my niacinamide, so this is a nice cinnamide 10% zinc and I'd use that. So this was something that was essential and that was recommended by everybody. Everyone on all sites, they're saying, yeah, you've got to use that if you've got um, blemish skin, oily skin. This is a must product to use. OK, so that's what I was doing from the very start straight away. Um, product I was doing, I was using at the beginning, but I stopped using it because again, somebody's um, couple of sites all said no, not to use it in the morning, I only use it at night time. But at the beginning, I was also using in the morning, the Alpha Arbutin product. So I was also using that in the morning. But again, a couple of sites said no, that should be used for night time. So what I was doing, so after I used the niacinamide, those have all absorbed in. I did use the ordinary natural moisturising factors, thing, but I found it too greasy. I didn't like the feel of it, so I stopped using that pretty quickly. And then I went in with either, depending on how sunny the day was, if it was a really, really sunny day, I would go in with my black, my black girl sunscreen which is the SPF 30 so I'd put that on or if I was just going to be around the house wasn't going out anywhere maybe just popping out and that was it but nothing much I would use my Murad essential vitamin C can't remember what it's called essential vitamin C moisturizer and that's also got SPF 30 but I would definitely put something on with an SPF of some sort so so that would be my morning my daytime routine okay Come nighttime, nighttime routine slightly different. So nighttime routine, um, my routine would be cleanse the skin again. So for cleansing, I would go in with the squalene cleanser again. If I had some makeup on, um, I would I'd go in with an oil cleanser instead, and I'd use that. So it depends. So if I had no makeup on my face, I would just use a squalene cleanser. But if there was a little bit of makeup on, so say for example, I had done a video, so I might have mascara or something on, I would put I'd use an oil cleanser to cleanse my face, and then go in afterwards with a clarifying soap, or I might go in with the squalene cleanser again. It just depends, but it's one of those products I would use at the night time, and then. But um, I did use that BHA, AHA acid thing. So it was like a, a mask thing, it's purple liquid. And you leave it on your skin for, I can't remember how long. I think it was 10 to 15 minutes. You left it on your skin for, and then you'd rinse it off. Oh my God, the first time I used that, my skin felt like it was absolutely burning. Um, 
and I was too scared to use it again afterwards. I, my skin may have got used to it, but I just have this thing. If something is burning on my skin, then it wasn't even, it wasn't tingling. It actually felt uncomfortable. And I just said, okay, I'm not using that again. And it's one of those products where they say you should probably use it maybe once every two weeks. I think they said once a week at one point, but most people who had the same kind of skin conditions as me were saying, don't use it more than every fortnight. So I used it once and I didn't use it again. What I did, what I have used, I've only used it, um, God, how many times have I used this? I've only used it three times, was the salicylic acid 2% mask. So I did use that. This that has a slightly tingling sensation and I have, I have used that. So I've used this probably sort of three times in this whole month and again that's fine and i'll probably will continue to to use it so again i i didn't see any particular amazing effects straight after using it but again saying that though I only, i've only used it at night time but it's a it seems to be fine hasn't done any harm there's no hasn't been any adverse reactions so i'm saying i'm saying that it's okay and i will probably continue to use it until it is finished um, but i know it's because i use quite a bit i use a brush to apply it on thin layer on um so i could probably get another three or four uses out of that no problems at all so after i've done all the cleansing and all the masks i would go in with my second acidic product and that would be the glycolic acid toner solution so i do use this at night time this is a product that's going to last a long time because i have been using it every night and it looks like i've hardly used it but i've used it every night for the last month so that says something so it's definitely a product that's going to last a long time um, so the first thing i put on usually is my my eye lotion so the eye lotion i've been using sort of the last sort of month and a half two months is the dr brandt um, eye serum so i've been using that around my eyes and then i've gone in with the ordinary retinol, retinol one percent in squiggling so it's this bottle here so I've been going in with that and this is supposed to have a brightening effect on your skin I believe so and again they say that you shouldn't use this with vitamin C or should you use it with vitamin C I can't remember I think they say you shouldn't use this with vitamin C I got confused with the information on this I must admit I think some sites said it should be used with vitamin C because then that will enhance it. And then I think some sites say you shouldn't use it with vitamin C um, at all, but you must follow this up with an SPF in the morning, in the next day. So that much I weigh and I understood. So if I use this at night time and I use this every night, I definitely put on an SPF the next morning. But um, I'd put the SPF on with my vitamin C, the Murad one, or I would use the Black Girl Friendly SPF 30. So got that. I think the thing I didn't quite understand is if you were supposed to use a vitamin C product with it or, or not. Wasn't quite sure of that. So that's why some days in the following day, I'd use my Murad SPF um, 30 vitamin C product i'd use that and sometimes i was used i would just use the black girl um sunscreen spf 30. i wasn't quite sure what the rules were i didn't see any negative adverse effects well i don't think so um i don't know if my skin would have been better if i followed one thing or the other i'm not sure but i always use this at night time i left this on for about 10 minutes to absorb into my skin and then i'd go into the next one and the next one would be the alpha R. and then i think that was it sometimes i would put a rose hip oil on and the rose hip oil i'd use is the one i've got from um, good molecules so sometimes i'd put that on and otherwise i would just leave it and that would be my routine and that's it it sounded more complicated than it is but then that is my routine i've used generally for the last 32 days how have I felt my skin has improved? Well, if I show you the pictures, so I'll just look at my phone and I'll put the pictures up on the screen. <clears throat> so the first picture is of this side of my face, I believe. And I believe that the blemishes have cleared up. It seems, I mean, the blemishes on this side of my face just seem to be really, really stubborn. Let me bring you in a bit closer. So they seem to be really, really... Um, 
um, these aren't blemishes this is hyperpigmentation and these seem to be really really stubborn there's definitely been an improvement in the last two three months so the first month i use the good molecules second month i've used the ordinary there's definitely been an improvement in how the product how my skin looks my skin now in my opinion is definitely more clearer it's definitely more brighter and even some of you have said on you know on my videos and my comments that you think my skin is looking much much better now and i actually feel more confident to actually not wear foundation now um i even did um, um, I've, I've even done sort of zoom meetings with, with work colleagues um like today i did a zoom meeting um at two o'clock and you know, my colleagues were saying sergeant you look really healthy your skin looks great so they're seeing a difference you know maybe because i'm looking at my skin every day I'm, I'm not noticing it but but i'm seeing that there is definitely a difference on the hyperpigmentation on this on the on this side of my face it's definitely not as marked um and as stark as it was so it is gently fading it's obviously going to take a lot more time i think if you look at my forehead so you've got a picture of my forehead here my forehead is definitely much clearer i mean i'm actually perfectly happy with how my forehead looks i mean again if you don't don't forget i'm 51 years old so how my skin is looking i'm actually really pleased with how it's looking up there um if we look at the other side of my face, so I think the other picture you've got is just on this side of my face here. You can still see that I've got some darker areas of my skin. So some some areas are a little bit uneven. So, you know, this area here, central part of my face is lighter than the outer perimeter. That's always been a thing. I don't think that's ever going to change. That particularly wanted to change. I'm, I'm quite happy with how it is. But the thing I really wanted to concentrate on was the hyperpigmentation. So the dark spots on my face. And I think they have faded. So what you tell me. So if you're looking at this side of my face, I think it has faded on both sides. So I think there's definitely been some improvement in both areas. I mean, this side definitely has improved a lot. This side, um, it has improved, but not as much as this side has improved. I think the ordinary, if you think about the price range of the products, most of the products are under £10, which I think, you know, that's skincare. Because skincare is expensive let's face it some of the skincare ranges out there are just ridiculously expensive and the brand i'm going to go on and use next is one of those that's really really expensive so the ordinary and the other brands which i've seen is the inky list they're much more affordable they've got a lot more products um, available for all different types of skin tones but you almost need a degree to understand which products <laughs> which combination of products you need to use that will work for you so it, it does tend to be a lot of experimentation to find out what works for you mix and match a little bit of a concoction here and whatever i mean you've got to do various cocktails just to get the right products but i think the ordinary if you're willing to spend the time just to experiment and just to work out which products will work for you you will find a range of products that's going to work for you i mean i'm really happy with the results i've received so far and i haven't got any issues about using the products that i've got in front of me i have no problems about using these products again and i'm quite happy to go on and buy these again um, the only reason why i probably won't go on and buy them is because i receive so many products in my skin in my subscription boxes so there's lots of things that i want to try out but if 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 you're not in a position like myself uh, you know i can go and get all these products from subscription boxes if you want to find skincare routines for you at a nice affordable price i would definitely say the order is the way to go it really is the inky list is another product range that i am very interested in trying out i've now got sort of two or three products from from the inky list and i'm just going to build up slowly and get more and more products from there and then i will try and check those products out probably at the end of this year maybe even going into 2021 um you know there's no there's no rush for me to do all of these things i don't want to subject my skin to too much abuse um but yeah i i've been very impressed with the products i've used so far with the ordinary once i figured out what to use it still means that i've got a whole lot of products here that i'm probably never going to to use so not quite sure what i'm going to do with those still in their box i have to check the expiration dates on those and if the dates are um if there's still plenty of shelf life on them i might resell them or i might put them in a giveaway but i'll have to check the expiration dates on them because i don't really want to be passing on to somebody else products that have only got a shelf life of another month 
something like that. But yeah, overall, I've been really impressed with how the um, Ordinary has worked on my skin. It's been great to use. It's a little bit more complex, so especially if you're someone who's used to just putting on um, just soap and water and, and putting on a cream and that's it. Um, it's more to get used to. But if you're not blessed with great skin, which I am not, then you're willing to put a bit more time and effort into it. And yeah, I've been happy. I, I'm really happy with how things are looking. So yeah, there you go, guys. Of course, you know what you need to do. I've given my view of how these products have worked for me. But tell me down below and tell everybody else. Share your opinion of how you, what products you're using. Do make sure you state what your skin type is at the start because that is important before you start sharing what products you use and how you're using it. Um, so with me, my skin type is oily, um, very oily, um, with blemishes, hyperpigmentation and uneven skin tone. It's much improved now after the the. the the care I've given it over the last two and a half months but that's my skincare so if you're going to share information about the products you use or recommendations do please state what your skin type is first and then and then state what products have worked for you yeah all right guys that's it thanks very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to show your appreciation by giving me a thumbs up down below and if you haven't done so already what are you waiting for i'm giving you all of this <laughs> hey so just press that subscribe button and if you can press the little notification bell because then that will definitely make sure that youtube recommends my channel to you because what i have noticed particularly during this time of um racial awareness I'll, I'll call it it seems like youtube are doing a little bit of backtracking now and they're suddenly starting to put in people's recommendations black content creators not saying anything but let's just say youtube weren't doing that before if anything they were suppressing us so people weren't getting black content creators in their recommendations if they were doing a search for say a subscription box or something you wouldn't see anybody in my skin colouring coming up on your screen but suddenly um, I've seen that that is changing and I'm starting to see more black content creators being promoted and I've noticed speaking to other uh, communicating with other black content creators they're saying they're seeing the same thing and suddenly their subscribing numbers are gone up so uh, it just shows how YouTube were playing before which is really sh it's just shady guys just shady but please don't forget to press my notification bell and uh yeah i hope you enjoyed my video thanks very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it see you soon take care bye